Hello, and welcome to The Poor Man's Chemist. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the extraction and purification of harmala alkaloids from Syrian rue powder. Now, I know I said I was going to do some experiments with the anthranilic acid, and those are coming. Um, I was really sick for several days last week, so I just haven't gotten around to doing the practice runs of those experiments that I want to do before I actually try to film them. So it's not a complete and total clusterfuck. Um, so anyway, I thought I would do this to hold you all over. Um, it's, I guess, harmala alkaloids loosely fall under the heading of edgy, and you all seem to like stuff that's edgy. Can't possibly imagine what you would want harmala alkaloids for, but that's none of my business. They're not illegal. All I'm going to say is, like usual, don't try this at home kids. <laughs> anyway, um, I figured I'd make it a little different and I would try a, um, not the classical extraction method that's usually used with these kinds of things, but I'd try something that was a little new. Uh, green extraction, I guess, is what they're calling it. That's how it was billed anyway in this paper. Um, the method that I'm using comes from the American Journal of Undergraduate Research. And it's called Extraction, Identification, and Quantification of Harmala Alkaloids in Three Species of Passiflora. Now, uh, it's by Abigail Fry and Catherine Haustein. And I don't know when it was published. What I've got here says that it was accepted in December 2007. So, imagine you have to look sometime shortly after that in order to be actually be able to find it. <clears throat> Um, the method that they use is, or instead of using chloroform or dichloromethane to do a lot of these extractions, they're using ethyl acetate. Now, in other herbal extractions that I've done, and they were all a legal kind, um, I found that ethyl acetate really is a good solvent to use for defatting the acid extract of the plant material. Um, after you've neutralized it, the solvent that you would choose to extract the alkaloid, I imagine that's going to vary with the alkaloid. Um, in this paper, they used ethyl acetate for that extraction as well. So, I mean, hey, I know that harmala alkaloids will dissolve in it, obviously, if that's what they use, so we'll just go with that. Um, I, again, ethyl acetate it may work for whatever alkaloid you happen to be interested in. It may not. I don't know. I will say that dichloromethane is usually the good general choice. You know, it, you, dichloromethane, chloroform, you'll usually go right there. Anyway, again, don't be naughty. You get in very serious trouble doing naughty extractions. So, <laughs> with all that out of the way, let's just jump right into the extraction of harmala alkaloids from Syrian root. All right, everyone. As you can see, I've changed my setup around a little bit. What used to be the bench underneath the canopy has now come out here to become part of the larger bench. I have adjusted how I had all of the um, iron pipes screwed onto the thing, so this gives me a bit more reach with everything and I can actually use my gram condenser now which is really nice before it was very difficult to try to use it without it dangling off the edge of the bench so much better setup anyways get started here so I have 24.15 grams of Syrian rue seed powder in this beaker here According to the paper, the first step is to extract the plant material with five times its weight of um, 0 0.5 molar acetic acid, or if you want it the way they wrote it in the paper, um, 30 grams of acetic acid per liter of solution. So what I did was create up um, two solutions here, so that should give me more than enough that will, for what I'll need. Um, what we're going to do, being five times the weight, um, we're going to use 121 grams here of the um, acetic acid solution, and it, the paper instructs us to extract it twice. 
um, since they were working with passion flower, um, their extractions lasted like five minutes a piece, but this seed powder is a bit more coarse, and so what I'm going to do is allow it to stir for 15 minutes each time, actually, just to make sure that we get everything out of there that we possibly can. I'm, I might even do a third extraction just to be sure we get it all. Because again, I'm, I'm all I ground this stuff up to a powder as best I could in a coffee grinder. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So, anyway, get started here adding in the first amount of acetic acid. Okay, so it ended up being more like 20 minutes on this one here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and I am going to go and extract it using a Buchner funnel. Put it somewhere where you can actually see it. And, um... Then I will return the solids to the flask, and then I will add the second portion of acetic acid that we will use to do the second extraction there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I'll be back when we are ready to add in the second portion. All right, everybody. So as you can see, attempting to filter this using a Buchner funnel was a total clusterfuck. Um, it promptly clogged that thing up, and absolutely nothing was going anywhere. So what I'm doing now is I'm just filtering this through um, a couple of pieces of cotton, um, just a couple of cotton balls. And what this will do is it will, and you see I'm constantly having to baby it here to get it to work. Um, this will get out the biggest particles, and then we can go through and filter it with the Buchner funnel, or even just a coffee filter would probably work at that point. Um, I, I figured that this part would be a pain in the ass, so just FYI, when you're not doing this, um, yeah, you might want to just go with filtering out, like, the large particulates first, and then doing a second filtration for the smaller bits. Um, again, when you're not doing it. Alright, everyone, I have the second extraction going now. Um, this is what I've got off the first filtration. It was the single biggest pain in the ass to get this stuff to actually filter to any degree. So, when you're not doing this, expect a lot of issues with trying to get that crap to filter. Um, like I said before, when you're not doing it, you could try to filter out the big particulates first, and then just filter it again to get out some of the smaller ones. Um, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing again, at least to get the biggest stuff out of here. And then when I can get that second portion that's extracting down to where it looks something about like this, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you now I'm going to cheat. And I am going to centrifuge, I'm just going to pour that into tubes and then I'm going to centrifuge it and then we're going to go on from there. Now I realize that everybody that's not doing this doesn't have a centrifuge. Hey man. Invest 50 bucks and get one on Amazon. They're pretty handy things to have for, you know, when you end up with crap like this that just does not want to filter, would take forever to just sediment out on its own. And, I mean, you know, what self-respecting lab doesn't have a centrifuge? Come on, people. You gotta up your game. <laughs> so, anyway, once that, um... Second batch there has, um, once the second portion is finished extracting, I'll filter that off, and then when I've got everything to, in, you know, in here and this basic consistency and all together, um, I will come back then and we will go from that point. Alright, everybody. So, um... As it turns out, after reading up some more on it, I've decided against trying to use heptane or any other 
alkane that I've got to try to extract this stuff. Um, I do have about 30 mils of petroleum ether here, as you might be able to tell from the bottle, I've had it for a while. Um, I am going to do that, and what I'm going to do to compensate is do another um, extra extraction with ethyl acetate. And we'll see how it looks then. I mean, five times... I, I mean, in my experience, it doesn't even take that many times, but, I mean, that's what's in the paper, and we're striving to make this one as good as possible, so we're, we'll go with that. So, what I'm going to do is just transfer this to my awesome big separatory funnel here. Isn't that nice? And make sure it's closed. And so you can see it. Hopefully the camera stays in focus. Add that in there. And I don't know if the camera picks this up, but you can almost see, especially on the glass, it has kind of an iridescent sheen. That's the UV from the sunlight making it fluoresce. You can actually see it. Alright, so here goes the petroleum ether. Uh, no, wrong one. Okay. So I'm going to turn that. Turn the knob there to equalize the pressure. Gently swirl it here. No need to go crazy with it. You want it to have good contact, but we don't want to form an emulsion. So yeah, don't do shit like that. You don't want to splash it. Alright. Seal it back up. Gently turn it back up here. And... I don't know if you can see it here. Let me adjust this. So I honestly don't know how much of that you guys saw. I'm sorry, I will do it again with the ethyl acetate here. So you can see that the petroleum ether portion, which is floating on top, has changed color. So that's a good sign. We'll give it a little swirl here to try to get everything to come together. That also helps to break up the globules. You, you don't want to go crazy though, because again, you don't want to form an emulsion with it. And, let's see, let's equalize the pressure again. So anyway, let's do that again so you can see it. So we open it up, and without splashing it too terribly much, we just want to swirl. We want to make sure that it's getting contact, but we don't want to go nuts with it and shake the shit up out of it and form a wicked ass emulsion that you will then have to centrifuge out. Or have fun trying to salt it out or whatever fun and games you have to get up to. As y'all might have guessed, the moment I got a centrifuge, I was so over and done with that shit. <laughs> it's like, just centrifuge it. I don't care if I have to pour it into individual little 15 mil tubes and centrifuge it that way. Fine, whatever. That's a hell of a lot easier than just about anything else and a lot quicker. Okay. So, then we're just gonna <clears throat> transfer this here without transferring the petroleum ether layer.
Oh, that smells lovely. Okay. Okay. So let's see here. Okay, this thing is closed. Put this back in here. And I know it's not exactly 50 mils. It's fine. Alright, so. Oh, uh. Now, um, a little bit of ethyl acetate will dissolve in water. I think it's like 8 grams per liter at 20 C or 25 C, that's what I think it is. Um, so you will lose a little bit of ethyl acetate into this solution here. Okay. Yeah, and it is very volatile. So you see where the top was ready to pop off this one. It's probably getting ready to pop off this one too. Alright. So you see what I mean when I was talking about with ethyl acetate? Like what a difference, right? There's all kinds of junk already been taken up in just that first portion. <laughs> it, like I was saying, it just seems to work better than a lot of other solvents for this kind of thing. Let's go ahead and just give it a little bit more. Get as much of a bang for our buck as we can. Right. And you can see it separates out pretty easily. Now if you go nuts and shake this up and everything you will get an emulsion that is much much more difficult to separate out than what you just saw there yeah the, the trick is to let the solvent get as much contact with the solution you're extracting from as possible without forming an emulsion and create a big, a big mess that just takes forever to separate. All right, everybody. Here is our cleaned up acid extract that I've had storing overnight in a cooler full of ice. The next step in our extraction protocol is to neutralize this solution with, they use sodium bicarbonate, we're going to use sodium carbonate solution. Um, I don't know why they use bicarbonate instead of carbonate. Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't make a big difference because I just don't have any bicarbonate here at the moment. So, we're gonna go with carbonate instead. Anyway, I did wanna show y'all something here. I don't know if I mentioned before that this stuff is highly fluorescent and I've got a UV light going here inside the lab and look at that stuff man that's why I was saying it's very easy to track harmal alkaloids during the extraction because under UV light they glow so brightly so anyway I just wanted to show you all that so I'm going to go ahead and put the camera down and then we're going to get started on neutralizing this bad boy <laughs> All right, everybody, this is just like last time. All we're going to do is pour the extract in here. See, it has a very bright color. It's opaque. It's got lots of something solid suspended in it. And I did go and look up the solubility of the various harmala alkaloids. I don't know, man. But let's just hope that I would, finding anything about ethyl acetate in particular was very difficult. 
But the paper we're working from says to extract it with three 100 mil portions of ethyl acetate. So that's what we're going to do, just like yesterday. Invert and vent. And you can see there's a lot of ethyl acetate in there. But we'll be able to check it by UV to make sure that it did indeed extract out into the ethyl acetate. Okay, everybody, so after making the extract alkaline and extracting it with three 100 milliliter portions of ethyl acetate, this is what I've got. The ethyl acetate layer hardly fluoresces at all. It does some. It does fluoresce some, although really not that much. The aqueous layer, however, is brightly fluorescent. So, ethyl acetate, it's fluorescent some, I guess there is something in there, but a lot more seems to still be in this aqueous solution. There's a little bit of ethyl acetate on the top there. But most of it seems to be in the water. Oh, sorry about that. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> hmm. All right, everybody. I went back and I looked at the paper, and this is the best I can figure. I mean, based on the ultraviolet light test that I just showed you, there's probably alkaloids in both of these. So different harmala alkaloids extracted out. Some stayed in the water, I think. I think that's what's fluorescing in here. And I think some were extracted. So what we're going to do is we're going to work up both of these things. For this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reacidify this with hydrochloric acid and make it acidic. And then I'm going to add enough sodium chloride to make a saturated solution and then I'm going to chill this on ice and hopefully that will precipitate out any harmala alkaloids that are in here. This I am going to work up the conventional way. I'm going to go ahead and dry this with anhydrous sodium sulfate that I spent all day yesterday making. Um, and I'm going to dry that out and the way that we do this is we just take dry anhydrous sodium sulfate you can make it up just by reacting sulfuric acid with sodium hydroxide, boiling it down, crystallizing it, drying those in an oven, and taking them out when they're dry, crushing them up, putting them back in the oven, drying them at 450 Fahrenheit for a couple more cycles, you know, two more, three more runs, and then you should have pretty darn dry sodium sulfate. That's what we're doing here. And so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do with both of these. So... I'm going to go ahead and, and do that, and I will come back when this one is dry, and we are ready to distill this. There we go. This is distilling nicely. Getting a little cloudy as it goes. And, surprisingly, can't really smell any ethyl acetate. Probably because it's chilled so well. But... It's all going very smoothly. All right, everybody. Here we go. This is what we've got left after the ethyl acetate was all evaporated away. That's just a little bit of ethyl acetate in the bottom there. But as you can see, we have harmala alkaloids crystallized out on the bottom of this thing. And we can tell that they're harmala alkaloids because they fluoresce like crazy. Look at that. How cool does that look, right? It's like something off a movie. Now, as for the aqueous portion, there is no solid that's precipitated out of this that I can find. I don't see anything. It's still really hazy. Like there might be some kind of solid suspended in there and it still fluoresces like crazy so obviously I mean best I can guess is that 
somehow some of the alkaloids were separated from some of the others. Some came out with the ethyl acetate and some stayed in the aqueous solution. Now, I don't know, maybe if you, you know, increase the salinity of the aqueous solution, you might eventually get those things to drop out, but, I mean, really, I think the moral of this story is, why bother to isolate the alkaloids this way at all, right? <laughs> That's a fun exercise. So, anyway, and I mean, hey, you know, I'll dissolve this in a little bit of alcohol and, um, put it in a bottle and put it on the shelf and it can sit there as a cool curiosity I guess because I, I don't have any use for harmala alkaloids but anyway so there you go not not a you know as wonderfully successful as I would have hoped but I mean in principle it did work we did isolate harmala alkaloids so there you go anyway I hope you've enjoyed this little exercise I hope you found it educational um, if you have any tips or tricks related to this kind of, you know, extraction, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, like I said, harmala alkaloids is one I've never really messed around with before, so it was kind of interesting, definitely different from what I expected, so it was very cool. So yes, any and all insights are welcome. So anyway, hope you like this, and um, uh, yeah, like, dislike, you know, any and all engagement is definitely welcome. And we will see you on the next video.